everyone. Welcome back to the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube for the latest episode of Broncos Now. Team reporter and host Sydney Jones here. And coming up on today's episode, we'll hear from interim head coach Jerry Rossberg, quarterback Russell Wilson, and safety Justin Simmons for the first time since the Broncos parted ways with head coach Nathaniel Hackett. Plus, I'll have the latest injury report and Phil Milani joins the show. All that and more coming up. Here at the UC Health Training Center today, interim head coach Jerry Rosberg spoke for the first time. He opened up his press conference with a lengthy opening statement in which he talked about how humble he is for this opportunity, his confidence that he can do the job, and more. First of all, I'd, I'd like to just let you know that I'm humbled by this opportunity that I've been given. And uh, at the same time, I'm very confident that I can do this job for the next two weeks. And I think those two traits are really valuable. I've talked to players over the years about the value of humility and the, the also the, the cooperate with confidence. And that, that really is the power couple for me because we don't all know everything. We can't all do everything. So we have to embrace the fact that we can learn and we can keep pay attention and open our eyes. And at the same time, we are all gifted with traits that not every person has. So we, we bring a unique ability to the world. And if we can combine the humility that we possess with the confidence that we possess, we can do great things. And I, I believe that that's the case right here. I've been asked to do this job and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm humbled by the opportunity, but at the same time, I can do this. Rosberg went on to discuss his role the next two weeks and what he hopes to accomplish. I'm desiring that we win two football games these next two weeks. I'm desiring to have a great practice here in about an hour and a half or less. I'm desiring to have great meetings after that practice. I'm desiring to have players play the way that will excel, will allow them to excel in their careers. I'm not looking at it like what's happening in, after the season ends. I'm not trying to build a resume. And I haven't had a resume for 15, 17 years. I haven't needed one. So I don't, I'm not trying to enhance any kind of reputation that I may or may not have. Both quarterback Russell Wilson and safety Justin Simmons spoke today on what head coach Nathaniel Hackett meant to them, and they talked about what they both wish they could have done to help him. You know, uh, obviously, you know, devastated by Coach Hackett because I think he's an amazing man, amazing teacher, amazing father, just watching him with his kids and what he's been on to do and how he's taught the game for us. Um, you know, this season has been um, a season that we never thought was going to happen the way it did. Um, and uh, he was a guy that spent all his time, all of his effort, um, into us as, as players, as staff members, everybody coaches as well. And so I think that he, um, <clears throat> he's going to be an amazing coach. Um, he's one of the brighter minds I've been around. And um, <clears throat> I think also, too, you know, it's been a crazy season, tons of injuries, tons of everything else. But the reality is, is that, you know, I, I wish I could have played better for him, too. You know, I wish I could have played at the, at the standard and the level that I've played, you know, I've always played at and know, know how to play at. So, um, but what I do know, is uh, he's resilient. He's going to be a tremendous coach, like I said, and um, you know, I love him to death, and everybody uh, misses him for sure. You know, obviously it's <clears throat> it's tough, it's difficult, right? You build uh, relationships with, with coaches and, <clears throat> and families, and uh, Coach Hack was, um, you know, one of the, you know, one of the better people that I've been around. Um, and so it's always difficult, man. Obviously this, this game is always going to be about um, winning, and, um, for me, I'm just disappointed in, uh, you know, like us as, uh, you know, like players kind of, you know, getting that job done. Um, that's what I think about. So um, it's, it's tough all the way around. But I have nothing but the utmost respect for Coach Hackett and, um, and the th things I've learned from him just over the past few months of, uh, of sharing that relationship with him as my, as my coach. So, um, Always going to have respect for him. Always going to love him. And outside linebacker Randy Gregory and guard Dalton Reisner also spoke to the media today and discussed their impressions of interim head coach Jerry Rosberg. Yeah, I mean, he I actually spoke to him. He was one of the – I think I was one of the first guys he spoke to when he first uh, got here. And, um, you know, he commands a lot, and I think that's what we need at this point in the, in the season is um, accountability, um, attention to details, you know, the finer things. I think that's – you know, when you look at on the schedule and we've lost – I think eight or nine games by one possession. I think at the end of the day, that, that comes down to, to the little things, the details. And so 
I think with, with Jerry, that's going to be big with him, um, hammering down those, th those types of things. And I think it'll be good for us. I think guys will respond the right way, and I hope they will, and uh, finish out these next two weeks on a good note. I'm, I'm a big fan of Jerry. He's a uh, – I don't even know the word, man. I don't even know the word for Jerry. I, I don't even know the word. Anyways, uh, very on it. He's very on top of all of it, man. you got to respect him for that. And when he came in and he was helping with situations, I was a big fan of Jerry as well. And just seeing how well he stepped into this role, Cliss – and how he's uh, taken upon him to get the most out of us and get this thing rolling, I respect him a ton. So I've really enjoyed it. Uh, there's been some changes, and uh, we're excited to see where that leads. So really trying to just buy into what Jerry's doing. Despite all the news this week, the Broncos still have a game to play this weekend. They'll look to snap a 14-game losing streak to the Chiefs at Arrowhead on Sunday. And Coach Rosberg spoke today on what it would mean to end that streak. That needs to change. It needs to change. And so... How do you go about doing that? Well, you, you put together the best game plan you can. You put the best players in the field. You teach them how to play and play together. And you go about making measure of that, changing that. That's a, that's a number that I'm having a hard time grasping, real frankly, because this organization is a, has a steadfast, incredible football tradition. And it can't be that way. It just cannot be that way. So. I'm setting out to try to, in one week, setting out to change the course of that. Now let's take a look at today's injury report. A pretty lengthy one today. Tackle Calvin Anderson did not participate in practice. Neither did outside linebacker Baron Browning. Tight end Greg Dulcich. Outside linebacker Randy Gregory. Safety Kareem Jackson. Defensive tackle DJ Jones. Running back Latavius Murray. Defensive lineman Mike Purcell. Offensive lineman Billy Turner. Defensive tackle Deshaun Williams and cornerback Kwan Williams. While guard and center Quinn Miners, wide receiver Kendall Hinton, wide receiver Jerry Judy, guard Dalton Reisner, and wide receiver Cortland Sutton were all limited. Now joining me here in the Broncos podcast studio to dive a little bit deeper into today's press conferences is fellow team reporter Phil Milani. Phil, thanks for joining me today. I know it's been a really busy couple days, so appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sid. Yeah, it's been, nice. it's been uh, quite the week around here. It certainly has. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about, so we'll get right to it, Phil. We heard from interim head coach Jerry Rosberg earlier in the show. Uh, he talked, of course, today for the first time. Had a really long opening statement, 13-minute opening statement. I guess, just Phil, what were kind of some of your main takeaways from his press conference today? I think overall he just struck the right tone yeah. for what this team needs right now. And I think that that just comes with him being a little bit older. Um, the respect factor is very high for uh, Jerry Rosberg, and I think that uh, – he just really seemed at, e at ease, comfortable up there, right. and he was just able to talk in a really a professional manner. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought the, the things that he said were on point, and I think that he brings a lot of what uh, Greg Penner was talking about just a day ago, yeah. uh, accountability, leadership, a discipline, uh, the way that he talked about certain things I thought was really on point, and particularly uh, – in his opening statement, he thanked ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, I think that that's important. I mean, he just was uh, uh, given the uh, opportunity here to lead a franchise as a head coach for two games. Important to thank ownership. Uh, he talked about his relationship with George Payton and, uh, you know, uh, how they've known each other for a long time, back to when George was starting out as just a young scout. Uh, I thought that that was very classy of him to just uh, – thank the people he needed to. And then when he started talking about this football team, you know, he was like, Hey, I made a couple of staffing changes because they needed to be made. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I know special teams and our special teams aren't good enough. Yeah. You know, and he was talking about it in a way that was like, it hit home, you know? Sure. And so I just thought that he struck the right tone. Uh, of course, he uh, fired Dwayne Stukes, the mm -hmm. special teams coordinator, and then Butch Berry, the offensive line coach. Um, so he, I think that he just came in right away and was like, there's a new Things sheriff in town a little. And uh, um, that was the right message and the right tone for that press conference and for what this team needs these last two weeks. For sure. And, you know, despite it only being two weeks, he seems really excited. You mentioned just about the opportunity. He feels, you know, humble, very confident in himself that he can do it and just 
grateful to be here and to be doing it. Yeah, I mean, he looked at it like as a, a big responsibility yeah. that uh, he's been uh, given the opportunity to try and uh, lead this team the final two weeks. And he talked about like through his tenure uh, as a coach, just all of the great coaches he's been around. Right. They've all aspired to become head coaches. And that's never happened for him. That opportunity has never presented itself. And now he feels like, okay, this is kind of like a special little two week stretch here where I'm going to be running things. And uh, yeah, he looked at it much more than just uh, let's just f finish these finish last the two games and get to the off season. He was like, no, like, let's try to do this the right way. Let's try to get a win here against the chiefs. Let's try to finish the season strong. And he didn't want to talk about the future or anything, or he certainly wasn't like, Oh, this is an opportunity for me to build my resume or whatever. Yeah. I mean, he was retired before he was, uh, uh, got the phone call from George Payton. So uh, maybe a little bit different than maybe if a younger coach got this opportunity and was like, look, I want to put this on my resume so that I can be a head coach permanently somewhere. Right. He's not looking at it like this, but uh, he's looking at it like uh, just sort of a special, unique opportunity for him. Uh, someone who's a little bit older and further along. Yeah. And he even talked about a Jerry Rivero, you know, reports came out saying that, you know, ownership and George had offered Ijero Rivero this interim coaching job and he turned it down and he even talked about how much respect he had for him to do that. And, you know, we heard Justin Simmons say in his press conference earlier, just how much respect he has for coach E and, you know, to see him do that tells you just so much about who coach E is. Yeah. Obviously he's a long time personal friend with Nathaniel yeah. Hackett. So, uh, you know, I think that that is, uh, like we were just mentioning, maybe a younger coach like coach E, exactly. he would want to have this opportunity to try and, uh, put that on his resume. But, uh, yeah, obviously he's a long time friend with Hackett. And, um, I also do think that it speaks a lot to, um, coach Averro, just the way everybody's talked about him. Ownership talked about, about uh, how the defense had played with a lot of uh, character and discipline. Mm -hmm. You heard um, Jerry Rosberg talk about it that way today. And then, of course, the players, too. So I do think everybody has a, a lot of respect for uh, Coach Averro. And look, the defense has been the the highlight of the season. And last, last week against the Rams, they did not play very well. Mm -hmm. uh, the Rams scored on eight consecutive possessions. All around, it was just a bad day for everybody yeah. out there for the Broncos. So, um, but, but for the most part this season, this Broncos defense has played really strong and a, a large part of that credit goes to coach Averro who came in, uh, having to fill some big shoes with Vic Fangio, mm -hmm. uh, one of the defensive masterminds in this league. Uh, he had to step into those shoes and be the defensive play caller and everything. And he's done a, an admirable job this year. Yeah. Well, it seems like all the players, their impressions of Jerry Rossberg have been all positive. You know, we heard from Randy Gregory and uh, Dalton Reisner earlier in the show about that. Bill, how do you think the players are just kind of handling this situation? You know, two weeks left in the season. Of course, we know they all how much they all loved Coach Hackett. We heard both, you know, Justin Simmons and Russell say they wish they could have done more to help help keep him this keep this job. So, uh, I mean. I With think the season that, where it's at, yeah, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, I think that Rosper comes in and he's uh, way different than Coach Hackett is. I mean, Hackett is um, was uh, a very player-friendly coach. Mm -hmm. He's hugging everybody. He's, uh, you know, he just has a different relationship with everybody. I think Rosper comes in with a little bit more of a disciplinarian type of mindset. And in these types of situations, I think they could go one of two ways. Either this team just decides to mail it in and say, look, there's just two games left. Let's just get this over with yeah. or they can bounce, have a little bit of a bounce back here. And that happens a lot throughout the league. When the, a coach gets fired in the season, mm -hmm. the interim coach comes in and there's a bounce back game there. So not with the Panthers this year. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and so that happens. Sometimes you saw the Colts, Jeff Saturday right. came in off the street and they were able to win a game there. Mm -hmm. So um, that can happen where I, uh, 
And, and you heard Russell Wilson talk about how the uh, the practice today, he was really right. impressed by how the guys like really locked in. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a sign of a, a potential bounce back game coming in this week. But what a week for a Rosberg Gosh. to step in here to go on the road, the face the Kansas City Chiefs, a team that's looking to still be in play for that number one overall seed, a first round bye. Mm -hmm. The Chiefs have everything to play for. Um, so a bounce back game. Hey, that I think Broncos country would take that. Oh yeah. Uh, a win is a win and a win over the chiefs is special no matter what. So yeah. some people might say that this game doesn't count. No, it counts. If you could snap a 14 game Gosh. losing streak to them yep. and get your first win over an AFC West opponent this season. this season. I mean, how much do we talk about win the West, win the West, win the West. Mm -hmm. How about let's win one game against <laughs> the West? Huh? Yeah. So, uh, I think that it, a win this week would be tremendous and maybe uh, the bounce back effect could come into play this week. Yeah, I hope you're right, Phil. And it was nice to hear a Jerry Rosberg talk about this 14 game losing streak. And he quite frankly just said, this is unacceptable. And they got yeah. it. They got to snap it. Look, one of the things that Hackett struggled with this year was talking about rivalry Rivalries, games. Yeah. For some reason, he couldn't just quite grasp the sense of what these games games meant you know and I think that Rosberg just was like no we got to beat these guys yeah and, and he struck that tone for sure that fans want to hear that and yeah. so yeah I mean this game means more to to Broncos country in a normal situation Definitely. this year I think that fans for the most part have just been like Checked out. this has been terrible yeah. <laughs> and but I do think that I do think that no matter what a win would be big for this team, for those guys in the locker room, uh, I think that that would be an emotional boost. And uh, against the Chiefs, it would be that much sweeter. Definitely. Yeah. Well, they got nothing to lose. So yeah, we'll see what play happens. free a little bit, yeah. you know. And uh, I, I do think that before the switch at coach, there had been a, maybe a sense of let's see if Russ and this offense could click a little bit and and give uh, uh, some momentum to the post or to the off, off season, season. Yeah. where they feel like okay, there's a little bit of positivity there. Mm -hmm. Now I don't think that that is as much into play. It's more of just uh, let's just go see if they can finish strong, you know. Right. And then let's hit the reset button versus let's Needed. try to build some momentum. I think hit a reset button uh, after the season is over and just get back to work with a fresh start yeah. uh, versus that. But I do think that if Russ can go out there and play well, maybe you just feel a little bit. Uh, a little bit better. Yeah. And, yeah. and there, I am. That is one thing I'm really interested in watching is just how Russ handles all of this because all season long, it's been how's Hackett and Russ, how are they working together? How is this going to mesh? Okay, well, Hackett's gone now. So mm -hmm. it's Russ it's now. It's Russ now. So uh, let's just sort of see what happens here. And let's see how he handles this because he was asked directly, mm -hmm. you know, hey, for this to be a desirable opening and and for this to be the job that everybody you hopes that it is, yeah. uh, that they can attract some of these top coaches, you've got to play better. And then Russ started sort of answering and like, yeah, as a team, we got to do this. And then the reporter stopped him and was like, no, this is Eric, Good Eric Goodman, uh, who was mm -hmm. doing that, said, hey. No, I'm talking about you. You've got to play better for this to be a desirable job. And Russ said, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, and I, and he, he said he that yeah. he looks forward to playing better. So uh, he knows that these are dark days right here. He's been talking about that the last right. couple of weeks here. And, uh, and for this to be a desirable job, he does have to play better because the new coach that comes in has to be like, I can win with Russ, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. uh, that's just going to be a big part of this, uh, this sort of this transition and, and the coaching search coming up here. So um, For sure. let's just see how he handles it and see it, see what happens here against the chiefs on the road. You, like you said, said nothing to, lose. nothing to lose. So just go out there and play free and who knows what could happen. Yeah, that's true. A lot to look for still. Yeah, yeah, in this yeah. season. So, uh, and I think that uh, the Chiefs have everything to play for. So, if you could go in there and maybe play a, a little bit of a spoiler, yeah, that I think that is uh, that's what uh, Broncos country has uh, to play for. 
I hope to see it. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll see. Bill, appreciate your time always. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Sydney. I'm always happy to come on, and especially with the new year coming up, uh, yes. we're a positive outlook and a, a new approach. Okay, next year or next week on the show, we're going to yeah. do some New Year's resolutions. Okay, I like yeah. it. All okay. Right. I like it too. All right, thanks, thanks Sydney. Bill. Well, that'll do it for today's episode of Broncos Now. Broncos Country, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you meet me right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube tomorrow for another episode. I will see you all then.